coming up on Current OC. On this episode, we'll show you the true meaning behind Arbor Day. Plus, we'll show you highlights from the recent charity basketball game, featuring professional athletes and local members of our community. These stories and more, it all starts now on The Current OC. Are you ready to make a fantastic little painting with me today? Super. Tell you what, before we get started, let's have them throw all the colors across the screens. All the blues, all the whites. Let's just have them throw them all across there. So let's just get started here. We're going to start off taking some of that Raider Red, the beautiful Raider Red color here. We're just going to put some on the palette here. And we're just going to go up here. Go up gently, gently with the bristles. Just, just want to go in there and just paint up, paint up a storm. All right, so before we switch to the ocean foam blue, we're just going to, we're going to wash our brush real quick. And now if you've watched me before, you know, this is where we really have a good time. We're gonna beat the devil out of the brush. You know, just simple, simple beating it. Just really gently, really gently to make sure you just get all. Okay. So, we're gonna just go back up here and go back up here, get some of that there. And oh, it looks like I have a finished painting for y'all today. So that's gonna be about it. Thank you for painting with me and wield and bless. OC TV studios along 6th and Atlantic. Raider Nation's leading news magazine starts now in high definition. This is Current OC. Hello and welcome to the Current OC. I am Luke Leonetti. And I'm Jenna Wilkinson. Hard to believe it, but we're already in the month of May. The school year is flying to an end, and the current OC is here to get you from now till summer vacation. Thanks for tuning in this week. We apologize for not being around in the past few weeks, but we were on hiatus due to state testing and spring break. But now we're back and ready to bring you the latest OCHS news. This week, our student artists got to display their masterpieces in the library for their peers to see. In honor of the annual student art show, Anna McCabe is here to tell us how we can all channel our inner artists. The life of a high school artist sometimes can be difficult. Between trying to find your own style, struggling to afford expensive supplies, and being satisfied with your work. Using these tips will help you become more confident on showing your work to the world. First things first, stop comparing your abilities to other artists. Art is about supporting and growing artistically as an individual. All art is unique, so what's the point in comparing? Another challenge a lot of artists experience is expenses. Research is definitely important when looking to buy new equipment. Search around a little before pressing checkout. In order to get the most out of your equipment, don't order the first thing you see. Or, if you have your heart set on something, look up reviews online or ask a friend that has used the product before. And make sure you take care of your equipment. They have feelings too. Something that is definitely difficult for new artists is having the confidence to present their work. I recommend getting out of your comfort zone with your art so you can grow familiarized with your work. If you feel most comfortable with black and white, try painting with color. Or if you're a photographer like me, keep a lookout for the newest photo shoot location. The most important thing to remember is having the latest and most expensive equipment doesn't automatically create good artists. You can still produce high quality media with older supplies. Taking these tips into consideration, you'll definitely see a difference in your work. This has been Anna McCabe reporting for The Current OC. Good luck! Art is a reflection of beauty, and another source of great beauty comes from nature, primarily trees. Recently, America celebrated Arbor Day, an event that reminds us of the importance of preserving one of our most precious gifts, trees. Nate Gowdy has more. When we think about the month of April, 
there are a few holidays that we have in mind. April Fools, Easter, Palm Sunday, Passover. But what about Arbor Day? It isn't often that we talk about Arbor Day being celebrated across the country, but why do we frequently forget about this fundamental holiday? The holiday originated in 1854, when J. Sterling Morton moved from Detroit, Michigan to Nebraska with his wife Caroline to settle and begin planting trees, shrubs, and flowers all around their dream home. Soon after, he became the editor of the Nebraska City newspaper and wrote bountiful information about wildlife and agricultural reservation into his articles. His passions for nature were reflected in his work, inspiring volunteers to plant trees in their own communities. After becoming a common name in the area, Morton became the Secretary of Nebraskan Territory, which enabled him to stress the importance of trees and botanical growth. With this title, Morton proposed a national holiday, Arbor Day. People gathered internationally to celebrate on April 10, 1872. It's estimated that more than one million trees were planted on that day. Seven years later, Arbor Day became a legal holiday and was celebrated on the 22nd of April, the same day as Sterling's birthday. What does this holiday mean today? People all across the world gather on the last Friday in April to continue the tradition of planting trees and acknowledging the importance of their role in the environment. So whether it's going out and celebrating yourself or helping inform others, be sure to go out into your community for this important holiday. Happy Arbor Day. This has been Nathan Gowdy reporting for The Current OC. High school basketball ended a while ago, but the action is still heating up at the Dixie Howell Gymnasium. Recently, Ocean City community members took on professional athletes in a competition where everyone wins. That's right, everyone played for charity. Luke Milai has more. On Saturday, April 13th, the Dixie Howell Gymnasium was host to a basketball game involving the entire community of Ocean City. This game, however, was not a rivalry game like OC vs. Mainland, but it was a charitable event. From OCHS faculty to OCIS students, all types of ages and people were out to enjoy a great night of basketball for a great cause. Running this wonderful event was the Dreams for Kids organization. It is a charitable organization put together by former NFL player Lonnie Allgood with a goal of mentoring young children into becoming educated adults along with great people in their community. The night consisted of a pre-game, hour-long meet-and-greet with the athletes participating in the game. Kids, fans, and adults of all ages stood in long lines to get the autographs of such great sports players, but even better men. Athletes like Kareem Huggins and Horace Jenkins knew how vital it was for them to be in attendance and participate in this event. Well, it was very important to be here to come out and encourage the kids and uh, encourage the community and just get them out and have everyone having fun. For so many years, a lot of us have, have been a uh, kind of role model or uh, aspiration to a lot of these kids who have it, who inspire to become what we are fortunate enough to, to do. So um, I, I, I enjoy it because I get a chance to interact with the kids, share some of my stories, and kind of have them visualize some of the um, vicariously dreams through us. Rows of people lined up outside the school for general admission tickets for the game. Fans could even participate in raffles for a chance to obtain sports memorabilia, some of which was signed by professional athletes. All of the funds from tickets and raffles go directly into the charity, which uses the money to support high schoolers with a future in sports by providing scholarships. Well, it's been 15 years now since I left football. Um, my whole focus is a nonprofit, so I raised money. Last year we raised over $100,000 for scholarships for kids to go to college. So my whole focus is that if you do the work, I'm trying to raise the money. The game eventually got underway with five former professional athletes taking on teams made up of the Best Buddies Club, OCHS faculty, OCIS students, OCPD and city council, and a team of fifth graders all sporting Sixers jerseys. The games were fun and full of energy, but not lost on Lonnie Allgood was the real reason we were all there. When I was growing up in North Carolina, uh, I grew up in a neighborhood where um, 
everybody helped everybody and everybody was watching out for all the kids and, and um, people grew up with manners. And, um, and I was going into schools and I just saw kids being so consumed with their uh, phones and lack of manners and uh, lack of respect for authority that I said maybe I could be a right voice to come in and talk to young people and tell them what I learned and that I got here because someone helped me get here. Dreams for Kids did a fantastic job putting this event together for Ocean City's community and raising lots of money for a great cause. The entire night was a huge success for everyone involved, and we hope that this becomes an annual event in Ocean City for a long time. This has been Luke Me Life reporting for The Current OC. Spring break has sadly come and gone. And April may have brought us many showers, but will May bring us beautiful flowers? What's the forecast for this week, Kayla? Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Long time no see. It's really nice to be back in the studio after our awesome spring break. If we take a look at our radar today, you'll see that we have no precipitation in our general area, some up north. We don't have to worry about that. However, if we move on to our current conditions, in Ocean City we are seeing temperatures in the 50s, which is pretty chilly, and I'm kind of waiting for it to warm up a little bit. I have been getting a lot of whiplash with all these cha temperature changes, but we will be warming up, I do believe, and we have 95% humidity, which is pretty okay, pretty mild, but you might wanna, you know, maybe careful about your hair. If we look into our Temperatures all over New Jersey, we are seeing temperatures basically in the 60s throughout the state. For some reason, Wildwood is at 78 degrees, but I think that we would all disagree with that. If we go on to our weekly forecast, as for tonight, we are seeing some clouds, some heavy fog as we go out. It is pretty hard to see, but we will maybe be seeing higher temperatures as we go out throughout the day. As for the rest of the week, we will be seeing more showers, some warmer temperatures, and as we go into our next school week, we will be seeing temperatures that aren't so bad, maybe some showers, but nothing that can't keep us down. Before we leave today, we remind everyone to get out and see your fellow classmates' artistic prowess. Why not attend the last few days of the OCHS Student Art Show? The exhibit is currently being held in our own library until the end of the school day, May 3rd. And while you're at it, come see the choir concert tomorrow night at 7 p.m. in the OCHS Auditorium. Well, that'll do it for us on this edition of The Current OC. Have a great weekend and hang on, because the end of the academic year is coming fast, and we're here to help you get there. Remember to log on and catch all of our shows and additional content by visiting oc-tv.org. We're also on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at OCNJTV, so be sure to like our page and follow us there too. And as always, thanks for watching.